On July 28th, back in 1540, Henry VIII had Thomas Cromwell's head cut off. I'm surprised he didn't see it coming. Cromwell, I mean, not Henry VIII. You see, Cromwell, he's not Oliver Cromwell, he's the other Cromwell, had been Henry's chief minister with a variety of official titles from 1532 through 1540. And in that capacity, he had helped Henry VIII do a great number of the menacingly aggressive things that Henry VIII had done. For instance, break with the Church of Rome, have Thomas More's head cut off for objecting to it, divorce Catherine of Aragon so he could marry his mistress, Anne Boleyn, and then have her head cut off. Do you notice a pattern here? Well, apparently Cromwell didn't. He went merrily along, assuming that it couldn't happen to him. Now, Henry VIII, of course, then acquired a third wife, Jane Seymour. He married her 11 days after Anne Boleyn was executed, which to me seems rather aggressively tasteless. But then again, I'm not Thomas Cromwell, am I? And then Jane Seymour died of complications from giving birth to the sickly future King Edward VI, the only male heir that Henry ever managed to produce. So then Cromwell got a brilliant idea that Henry should marry Anne of Cleves. And Henry did marry Anne of Cleves, but without having met her. And when he did meet her, apparently he was disgusted. We're not sure if this is legitimate or not. He'd seen a portrait of her. And as far as we can tell, the portrait was reasonably accurate and it does not make her look unseemly. But whatever the result, Henry divorced her in a big old hurry. And Cromwell fell from favor. In fact, he got himself executed the same day that Henry married his fifth wife, who he also had executed. Now, it should be said in some fairness, if there's any fairness in the story anywhere, that she was engaging in rather public acts of adultery, which wouldn't be a good idea no matter which king you were married to. In fact, it wouldn't be a good idea, period. It certainly wasn't a good idea with King Henry VIII. But here is the thing that strikes me about this. As I said, Cromwell didn't see it coming. He didn't notice not only that Henry VIII had a habit of beheading people, but that he had a habit of beheading people who had previously been trusted confidants or even more so, I mean, wives, things like that. That Henry was not just a megalomaniac, but he was a murderous, slippery, deceitful, ungrateful, threatening megalomaniac. And yet somehow Cromwell felt it couldn't touch him that he, was, he had special magic powers. He didn't look closely enough at his boss. He aided and abetted, and not until he found himself kneeling with a wooden pillow briefly did he say to himself, uh-oh, I've been helping a psychopath gain power. Now, not everybody who does this winds up getting beheaded. Beheading is kind of out of fashion these days, at least in the Western world. In plenty of parts of the world, it can still happen to you. But there's no shortage of people like Cromwell who are talented, ambitious in their own right. Cromwell had his own ecclesiastical agenda. They attach themselves to a figure like Henry, assuming that they can stay with him, stay on his good side, never get in the trouble everybody else is getting into, and then one day they find out it's not true. In modern democratic politics, you just get thrown under the bus. You thought you had the prime minister's ear and suddenly you're denounced, cast out, and made the fall guy for some piece of stupidity and villainy that was clearly coming from the inner circle all along. Politics would be a very different story if more people did see it coming. Of course, you might wonder why Henry VIII didn't see it coming. You think you had a sufficient number of close associates, you'd notice you were like that. Apparently, there was one guy in the Soviet power structure that Stalin used to greet cheerfully with, hey, haven't I had you shot yet? So maybe Stalin did know he was doing this. Henry doesn't seem to have, but of course, if he were the kind of person who realized that he had the habit of stacking his slain associates like firewood, you know, he probably wouldn't have created such a great big pile of them. The real mystery is, why is the person climbing over the pile to kiss the king's feet not a little more worried about what the pile is made of? And it's not just Thomas Cromwell, it persists into the present day, and it's one of the reasons why villainy succeeds in politics, because pettier villainy abets it. Thanks for watching. Click here to never miss a Rebel update. Want even more of the Rebel? Well, click here to become a premium member.